Hello and welcome to Come Up For Kids Goes Live. My name is Kelly Godell and I'm the Regional Coordinator for Prevention Services at COAD's Early Care and Education Division. COAD is the Child Care and Resource Agency for 31 counties in Eastern Ohio. This broadcast is brought to you today in partnership with the Ohio, Count, uh, Ohio Children's Trust Fund and the Eastern Ohio Prevention Council, both who seek to provide child abuse and neglect prevention services in Belmont, Carroll, Coshocton, Guernsey, Harrison, Jefferson, Monroe, Muskegon, Noble, and Tuscarawas counties. Thank you for joining us today. We are live and on site in New Philadelphia, and today my guest is Kristen Betts, who is a local early education professional. And today we'll be speaking about the toddler years, learning and development, what are the differences, and what can we as parents and community providers do to encourage both development and learning. So welcome Kristen and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Please so, get, just tell our audience a little bit about yourself and and and, um, and your passion about this topic. Okay, uh, my name is Kristen Betts and I am currently a consultant with COAD and I mainly focus on infant and toddler development but recently have been working on the CDA with the um, providers. So I've been doing CDA work and I have also, I graduated from Kent State University um, with a bachelor's degree in human development and family studies, but my main focus was on youth development. So I so this that. is very much your wheelhouse, very much what it you is. have chosen as your career path. Yeah. So we thank you for, for joining us today mm -hmm. and, and sharing um, your experiences professionally and personally about, mm -hmm. um, today we'll be talking about the toddler years. So yeah. let's just go ahead and get started about that. So if you could start by just kind of defining toddler years because we say oh it's that's an infant or oh this is a toddler so when we talk about toddlers what age range are we talking about toddlers it depends on who you talk to okay uh, it really does and where you want to define where toddlers starts um, you know our infants are anywhere from like birth to about 18 months or you know some even put them up to two mm -hmm. but I would say from 18 months till through three is about your toddler years is usually when that starts occurring mm -hmm. um, you start to see a lot more learning happening with toddlers their development's changing um, things they catch on to you know their language gets going um, they start walking they start running jumping mm -hmm. climbing mm -hmm. all kinds of things so the toddler years um, for some can be very difficult because now we have movement Mm -hmm. and we have language and all these other things that are happening so that's almost like the burst of time I, I know that professionally when we speak about you know really like that three when when you hit three years oh, yeah. that's when like tremendous brain so much development happens. is happening all along but like mm -hmm. three is when, the, when it really starts to snap yeah so this toddlers then is that build up to get to to, to to get to those parts so I would love for you to talk you know share with us today about you know development and learning mm -hmm. and what we can be doing to encouraging to encourage that in our in our little kiddos mm -hmm. and then also I, I just think going back to how you defined it um, we often want to put an age range and that was my mm -hmm. first question to you is well what age range is it more so that we're defining or we could define a toddlers by where they're at developmentally and where they're at in that process or is it yeah. better to kind of give those age ranges it kind, of, it kind of depends I think on the kids that you're working with I mean you can go to any child care provider or any parent and ask them and the differences that you're gonna see with the same one-year-old or the same mm -hmm. two-year-old are gonna be dramatically different mm -hmm. because and that's typical and it should be it's so individualized it and is so that's just something that a lot of times we'll classify them as young toddlers and older toddlers. Okay. Because your young toddlers are coming out of infancy, and mm -hmm. so they're not doing as much as our older toddlers, which are hitting, you know, more language, more movement, mm -hmm. um, just different types of personalities. They're learning more. Their development's changing. So you'll see a difference. So if providers have. Um, their groups broke up into young toddlers and older toddlers, mm -hmm. they'll be able to see those differences, I think, a lot easier because the transition time, you can tell when they're ready for the next mm -hmm. age group. Same and as it's an infant. probably helpful in a child care setting as opposed Correct. to a home setting Homes because different. because in a child care setting, you can kind of divvy it up and say, okay, well, this group is, 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 is about 
at this part of the process. Correct. And this group is kind of at a different part of the process. But when you're yes. a parent home alone, there isn't it a whole lot of the there's a whole <laughs> lot of comparison. Yeah. And so probably some of our, our worries or anxieties like, uh, yeah. what's my child doing? What's my child doing yeah. and um, is it at the right place? Correct. So it is, I think that's it's good to keep that in perspective it as well. Is. So for child care providers, yes. Yeah, okay. Child care providers have a benefit because they have other children that are doing typical things or same mm -hmm. things as the another child, so they can group them together a little bit better versus at home if you only have one toddler at a time, things are drastically different. Mm -hmm. My children are five and a half years apart, and what my toddler was doing are things that I'm like, did my oldest even do that? Like, why are you doing this? Because... I couldn't even remember because there was that five-year gap mm -hmm. and then trying to rethink is this where we should be not be or mm -hmm. because he wasn't in child care where my other one was so I had a better idea and mm -hmm. I know this stuff and the normatives and, and yeah. that way you do have that comparison so so it is a little different I mm -hmm. think um, depending on where you're at um, now the big thing here is learning what a child is doing is it developmental or is it learning because it's two different things and I'm gonna pause you right there yeah. and so with that being said can you kind of just help us through um, how you would define development mm -hmm. and conversely then what does learning look like and how do we know the difference and how are we encouraging both there may be ways that they're similar, so I'll just let you talk about yeah. both of those. It's um, If you think about development, it's something that naturally is going to occur. So it's something that happens and progresses over time. All of us have developed in some sort of area, so whether it be our growth motor skills or language skills, fine motor, everyone is born ready to do something developmentally. Okay. So whether it's movement, language, um, our fine motor skills, all of that's there, it just has to develop. So like an innate capacity, this is going to happen. It's, yes, unless there is some sort of disability or something that would halt that. Mm -hmm. That is the only reason it would never happen. Okay. So, you know, when we're born, you know, infants, some infants can hold their heads up automatically. You can hold them against your chest and their heads pop right up. Mm -hmm. Some of them you have to hold because they're all floppy. Mm -hmm. So developmentally, one child's already inched a little bit ahead of another one. It doesn't mean it's bad. Mm -hmm. But meeting that capacity is there. It's there. It's there to happen. Okay. So that will happen with every child. It just progressively continues and gets better. Now learning comes with the assistance of a teacher, of a parent, of a guardian. Somebody has to assist them in doing something so that they can do it. For a good example of that would be reading. Reading is not developmental, it's something that is learned and we have to be taught that. So there are going to be things that we have to teach kids to do. They're not just going to pick up a book one day and read it. Mm -hmm. They have to be taught those so skills. So skills have to be layered. And a lot of it is that developmentally they have to get to the point where they can learn it. Okay. So there is like, it's a struggle. I do this in trainings a lot to try to get providers um, to understand that some of these things we have to help teach them. They can't just learn it on their own because it's not a developmental mm -hmm. thing. It's a learned lesson, mm -hmm. really. So it can be a tricky topic, but I think it's an important topic because most people can't separate those two. Mm -hmm. And I can give some examples here of you know, good ways of understanding what's development versus what's learning. Let's move right into that then. I think now that we understand the, the concepts of development, and just to recap, is kind of that innate ability that yeah. is, is the capacity that exists within every child. Mm -hmm. um, it can be fostered, but it, it's not going to happen Correct. until they're physically um, or, or uh, have grown into that capacity. Yeah. Whereas learning is providing an environment tools, the skills, and, and, and it requires a facilitator. It does. It does. We have to facilitate we can't, that learning. We can't encourage a bone to grow no. within the child, but we can <laughs> right. then as a facilitator. So I think it might be helpful um, moving forward now that we have that basic mm -hmm. foundation about what we're talking about with development and learning. Um, yeah, share with us some examples of, of your experience yeah. and what you think is important for people to take away. Um, toddlers are, I find them to be like the great group of learning because they do so much and they learn so much and there's so much development happening and this is where teachers struggle a lot because they're not separating those two of what's development and then what's learning. So um, we focus on this a lot and I usually ask them questions like come up with a list of you know what's development and then what's learning and mm -hmm. let's see where we're at. 
And a lot of them, like for instance, like I have a book here, it's on potty training because that happens in our toddler years. That's one of the big steps that we make as a toddler. And a lot of providers will be like, well, that's developmental. And I'm like, see, it's a learned process actually because somebody taught us to do that. Mm -hmm. Where to go Somebody invented a toilet. I mean, and told us, Mm -hmm. like, this is where we go to the bathroom. Where in some countries they don't have that, so they don't know any different. Mm -hmm. So with toddlers, the thing is, is why we put it developmentally is because we've almost made it developmental because we say by the time they get to preschool, they should be using the potty. Okay. So we think a three-year-old should be using the potty, when in reality, developmentally, if they're not quite ready yet, they're not going to have that capacity Mm -hmm. to do it. And that could be control. Exactly. And we have to be there to teach them and to kind of get them in there, feel comfortable in there, and be okay with doing it. So we're there to facilitate it. So it's kind of more on the learning. I mean, developmentally, you have to be ready. Mm -hmm. But it's on the learned. We taught them to use the bathroom. We taught them to go there when they had to go. So Mm -hmm. we kind of pushed that along. So that's a big conversation we always have because that's the biggest frustration I run into with toddlers. And parents. I mean, that's that's anxiety because you said, Mm -hmm. well, the the social norms are that at three-year-olds, before you go into preschool, you need to be able to. That's one of the requirements. That's a a standard that we have set. But... It, what you're also saying is that developmentally, they may not be at that capacity building pace, but we can be providing them with the learning skills. Yeah. Um, so we could probably have an entire session oh, just on goodness. potty training. <laughs> we could. And I was going to say, <laughs> this book, it's called, we made this when I worked here at Coed, and it's called The Potty Book. And what we did is we basically took, um, like, we took pictures of the children and we cut them out. And we had a picture of their, I don't know if you can see this, but we put a picture of their actual toilet from the daycare, Mm -hmm. and we came up with a song. And so when, at the end, everything would say, like, raise your hand, like, if you want to try next. And so the kids would have their pictures, and they would be like, ooh, I want to go. And they'd come up, they'd put their picture by the potty, and then they'd go to the bathroom with the other teacher. So we were trying to teach the kids that... I mean, this is through learning, is we're reading this to you, we're encouraging you to go, we're telling you the process, mm-hmm. now it's up to you to go and decide if you want to do it or not. And even if they didn't want to do it, it wasn't like a shameful thing, it was like, an, okay, we'll try next time, not a big deal, but the concept of going to the bathroom and getting yourself in there was there. Because mm-hmm. we had a lot of teachers that had three-year-olds that weren't interested, and It was frustrating for the teachers, and I'm like, they're just not there yet. We have to give them time, Mm -hmm. and we don't want to make it um, a bad experience because if you make it a bad experience, Mm -hmm. they're not going to want to go. So um, that's a big example. Some other examples that would come with toddlers is because toddlers become more involved in eating. Mm -hmm. They like their foods, and we the foods they don't like. Yeah, or the foods that they don't. They're they're forming opinions. They're they're forming their own. So much. (laughs) <laughs> when it comes to lunch times and you know breakfast and dinners and developmentally what comes with eating is how you chew and swallow mm-hmm. so infants transition from the suck and swallow because infants suck once that suck goes away they end up being able to chew and swallow so holding food in their mouth chewing it and then swallowing it and that's a huge jump for a toddler is to start to get food into their mouth and also thinking hand eye coordination that, that's, so that's a physical development to be able to scoop to, to be able to use mm-hmm. a utensil because that's something that their bodies their nerves their muscles everything are, are, are forming and, and progressing and that's Correct. how they're able to actually do the physical yes. act yes so with that being the developmental piece, then yeah. we get into what is the learning piece? The learning piece is actually being able to um, take silverware and knowing what to do with it. Taking a bowl and a plate, it's learned because when you give a toddler a bowl and a plate, and if they don't use those at home, mm-hmm. they dump because, mm-hmm. well, if any time you give them a cup, a bowl, anything that they could dump it into one into another, a drum. it is like wow, <laughs> like let's dump this out and use it for something else, or. If I give you a spoon, if I give you a fork, and if you've never experienced those two things before, it's not common knowledge for them. Like developmentally, it's not in there like, ooh, this is a fork, I pick it up, I you know, get my food and I eat it. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that. So that's something we have to show them. We have to show them what food goes on a plate, our cereal and our milk are in a bowl and they stay in that bowl when we use our spoon. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of kids will find, um, you know, get their food on a high chair without the plates or without mm-hmm. the silverware. They can't learn to do that or drinking from a cup without a lid. That's not developmental. It's learned. Mm-hmm. Like they have to so learn to do that. It's and a practice. Role modeling yeah. And so setting, you know, some consistent things when we're, you know, I like your example of a bowl and a spoon. Yeah. And whatever we put in the bowl needs to stay in there in order Correct. for you to be able to get it. Yes. Um, so that's a that's a great example it I think is. of it's how we're role modeling. If mommy yeah. is eating her spoon, you know, her yeah. soup from with a spoon. Sitting in you front and just mm-hmm. and, and role modeling, so that's something that, that a, a toddler will know, correct, oh, and, and, and can have that that learning mm-hmm. piece of it. So that's a that's a really great example. Yeah, because it's it's two of the same thing. Like you think of them as the same, but there's mm-hmm. a little slight difference in how you you know approach those mm-hmm. two things, because that once again comes with frustration of why won't you use your spoon? Why won't you use your fork? Mm-hmm. If they don't have them, they're not going to do it if they've never experienced it. So um, just those little things that are in there and what teachers and parents need to do is be able to see those and then take that and help them learn. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so we're going to work on a spoon, just a spoon. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't need both at the same time, but let's just work on a spoon or let's just work on a cup without a lid and no food around. Like one thing at a time instead of here's everything because then it's It's everywhere. It's (laughs) It's everywhere. So you brought another example um, um, about yeah. art. Um, art is a huge topic for me, and it's something that I think child care providers struggle with and also parents because our expectations are above what our toddlers can do. A typical toddler should be able to have a piece of paper, crayons, markers, paint, stamps, whatever you feel like giving them, glue, they can have glue, but it's not going to come out to be perfect art. Um, art should be scribbles at this age and those scribbles are something that you will see that will progressively get better mm-hmm. because once again their fine motor skills are holding on to when we're talking get about better. developmentally they're mm-hmm. learning to hold yes. things yep. um, they're having more motor control with Correct. you know the muscles in their arms their legs their mm-hmm. you know what have you so and then they learn developmentally shapes. that's how we're looking yeah so okay. you start by the holding of you know anything so whether it be the marker or the crayon squeezing glue out I mean that's using muscles that maybe they haven't used before for that specific thing and so that's the development piece. that's a development piece now the learning piece comes with um, direction from us as their teachers or as their parents and what we're asking for them to draw so if we want circles or we want squares mm-hmm. um, toddlers obviously are going to get circles at some point because of their scribbles mm-hmm. But our older toddlers, as they get older and closer to preschool, should be able to follow those directions a little bit better. Um, We did a book. It's called um, What Do You See? And this is the Toddler 2 book. So this would be considered your older toddlers. And as you can see, there's still pretty a lot of scribbles. Um, This one says Mommy. So if you can see the picture that is drawn, I'll hold it up. It is a bunch of just little scribbles. But that is a picture of their Mommy. And the thing with that is it's important because as a parent, um, when you come in and pick up your child and you see something written like that, you don't want to be like, oh, no, that, that's me? <laughs> because when you look at that, you're like, wow. Um, however, that's still their picture of their mom. To them, they drew that. They're super excited about it. Mm-hmm. Anytime you can have your toddler, once they have you know good verbal skills, dictate to you what they drew they will tell you exactly what they drew and that will stay that way forever so So at that point you're enhancing both verbalization skills so verbal skills yeah we're talking fine motor there and then also um you know to kind of that that sense of confidence yes i can do this like this is my drawing and it's exactly what i said it was whether we see it or not it doesn't matter because Mm -hmm. they see it and in this example, and you can see, I can show you, it says circles. Mm-hmm. You can see circles, and I'll hold it up here if you can see it. There's like little circles in there. And this child had saw circles. They are in the older toddler group, so they might be a little older than most of the mm-hmm. toddlers in that group. So maybe they are starting to draw circles. Mm-hmm. And say the teacher had worked with them on circles that week. They remember that. Mm-hmm. So then you take into account memory and how they're remembering what they're being taught. Mm-hmm. And can they put it down on paper? So... There's a lot of exciting. It is exciting. And the progression that you can see throughout the year, Mm -hmm. if you're paying attention to it, it's huge. I mean, it drastically changes. 
So that's something that I think teachers need to do, even parents, just to kind of see. I know as parents we like to get fancy artwork. Um, however, for me as a parent, I remember when my oldest would bring stuff home, I would always know if he did it or not. Because I could tell. I knew his art, and I knew how he drew he and colored where he was. Yes. <laughs> and when some things would come home, I was like, hmm. And one day he handed me these little flowers, and he said, Miss Heather made these. And, and I knew because I was like, well, I knew because it was too perfect for him. Mm -hmm. Because everything was where it should be. A toddler should be able to put glue wherever they want and place their pictures or whatever they're given wherever they want. Because a toddler isn't perfect, and they're not going to make and it that's perfect. A, and that's a great thing. A toddler is not expected to no. put everything where it's supposed to be. No. And so I think we come back to it's, probably the very beginning of our talk about expectations. Yes. And so when we're looking whether it be art or, or learning new skills, um, I just think it's really important that I think I want to recap and just say it's really important that we are thinking both developmentally, where is my child? Yes. Um, and then what environment or mm -hmm. skills or facilitation am I providing Correct. as the adult, um, as a caretaker? Even older siblings are, are, are teaching. Those are the teaching moments yep. because they're role modeling what they're seeing yes. and, and where that goes on. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and I did think maybe we will do an entire broadcast on potty training I know. Or, or, or skills because I think that's something we all need help with. It is. And it's, and it's challenging and it's fun, but those are the toddler years. It is. Toddlers um, are, toddler, they get a bad toddler. rap. They do because there's so much happening and I think it overwhelms parents and providers mm -hmm. the same because there's so much going on. And everybody's at a different developmental level, and that makes it harder. Mm -hmm. Because what one group's doing, the other group's not. So then it, mm -hmm. it makes it even trickier to try to get them to learn mm -hmm. something or do it as a group. This is just such an a, exciting stage in, 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 in development and learning because it of is. so much going on. Yep. Well, I want to thank you, Chris. And I think, You're welcome. Uh, and once again, my whole goal is usually to learn something I didn't know before yeah. and to make sure that we're sharing information that can be helpful with child care providers or parents or anybody in the community that works with young kids or sees young kids in the grocery store. Because <laughs> exactly. having a little bit of understanding of, okay, why is that child acting that way? Well, developmentally, this is where they're at. Correct. And so I think it'll make us a, a, a little happier and a little less frustrated with, with a lot of our interactions. So again, thank you, Kristen, You're for welcome. joining us. Um, Please feel free, um, anyone who's watching, we would love to have your comments. We would love to answer any questions that you may have. Kristen and I will both be manning um, Facebook in the comment section if you have any questions. And thank you again for joining us, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you again. Thank you.